Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Minority Gamer Report. And a while ago I made a video showcasing my Marvel Super Heroes Limited Edition Arcade 1-Up cabinet that went from just being able to play three games to playing thousands. And in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how I did it. Hopefully this will come in handy if you plan to do something similar with your Generation 3 Arcade 1-Up cabinet. Now, before you start this, you're gonna want a pre-configured Raspberry Pi set up with RetroPie and your games. I made a video already on how to set that up a couple years back, so I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into this build. Let's start with the parts I used first. I used an HDMI LCD controller board, some Logitech speakers and sub, some dual-sided sticky tape, a USB male to female extension cable, some Velcro strips, zero delay USB encoder for arcade buttons, two LED coin select buttons, a custom J panel with three holes pre-drilled in, a power strip, a Wi-Fi smart plug with Alexa support, this is optional, an auxiliary cable extender, a Raspberry Pi with RetroPry installed. To hook up the marquee, I got a Y splitter, a female to female power coupler, and a plug converter. Now let's go into the modding process. You're gonna want to remove the back of the cab and unplug the wires going into the box-like metal thing in the back of the screen. This is where the PCB board is that has the stock games built into it. Take a small screwdriver and free up the PCB board casing. To remove the board fully, we're going to have to remove these cables. The small one comes off easy enough, but the large one takes a little bit of work and I ended up using some needle nose pliers to gently tug and wiggle it out. Once it's all off, we're going to install the LCD controller board itself. Now this is very important. Do not touch the controller to the metal back of the screen. That will short it out and just fuck everything up. Let's go ahead and attach the wires and the ground to the LCD controller board. Now you're going to have to mount the board. Since it can't touch the metal back, we're going to need to put something in between the board and the back that can sit between them. I used some cardboard, double-sided sticky tape, and some electrical tape to mount the board, but there's some better looking options out there like brackets or wood mounts that you can use as well if you want. Take the power supply for the cab and plug it into the board as well. Now we're going to take the Raspberry Pi and plug the HDMI cable connected to that to the appropriate port on the LCD controller board. You can go ahead and mount it to the inside wall of the cabinet with some Velcro strips. Before we move on and set up the controls, we should plug everything in and test it out. Go ahead and take the power strip and plug in both the cab and the Pi's power supplies. I also attached the Alexa smart plug between the power supply and the wall socket so that I can operate it by voice via my Amazon Echo or press the convenient on and off button on the side of it. Once that's all plugged in and powered, the LCD LCD controller's sister board should give off a green light. If it turns on, you're good to go and we can go to the next step. If it doesn't, you might need to do some additional tinkering like trying a different HDMI cable. With everything working, safely shut down the Pi and turn everything off. We're now going to set up our joysticks and buttons. Now let's unscrew and gently remove the controller panel. Then unscrew and take off the plastic cover underneath.
We can now see all the wires for the buttons and controller that are currently plugged into the stock controller board. We're going to disconnect those wires from the stock board and connect them to our two USB converter boards. First, we're gonna take off the large cable that formally connected to the controller panel. Next, we're going to cut the ties around the wires for better maneuverability. And then we're going to unplug each individual cable for each button and stick. This part is honestly a little annoying because everything's all glued up. So what I ended up doing was taking some pliers to wiggle each one out very slowly. But I highly recommend using an X-Acto knife or something similar to help get it out. Now that everything is unplugged from the stock board, we're going to replug everything into our USB converters. You can mount the controllers with some sticky tape if you want, or leave them loose for now. The order for plugging these in doesn't necessarily matter since we'll be programming everything in RetroPie, but it's important to make sure that both USB converters on each side are plugged in identically, otherwise it won't work properly. One more step before we start though is we're going to need to remove the cables from the joysticks and replace them with the ones that come with the USB converter. And then we're gonna go ahead and plug everything in. As I said before, make sure both LCB controllers have the buttons and joysticks plugged in identically on each side. Now, we're gonna add in our extra coin buttons so we can play our arcade games properly. First, be sure to insert them and the USB extender into your custom J panel. Then attach the included wires for them. Since these are light up buttons, they connect a little differently. Make sure you wire them up the way shown here and then plug the wires for the switch into the white outlets and plug the LED wires into the red outlets to light them up when the Pi turns on. Now we take the two included USB cables and plug them into the USB converters. Okay, so we have our buttons all set up and rewired. Now we just need to put it all back in and swap out the stock J panel for our custom one and make sure we plug the USB cables from the USB converters and USB extenders into the Raspberry Pi. Next up is audio. We'll need to plug in something to power the stock speakers now that we took out the PCB board. And that thing is this Logitech speaker set. We'll just need the subwoofer for this build, but you can also use the included speakers instead of the stock ones if you'd like. We're gonna plug in the auxiliary cable extender so that the cable will reach and plug into the auxiliary input on the Logitech sub. And I placed my subwoofer inside the cab itself. You'll be able to control the volume directly from that with the included volume control. And finally, we're gonna plug the output cable from the sub into the LCD controller board. After that, you can mount the volume control anywhere on your cab that you prefer. I chose to do it at the top of the cab to the side. And the last step is to get our marquee to light up again. We're just going to take our cables that we got for the marquee and wire it to the LCD controller and split the power between the LCD controller and the marquee so that they are both able to use the same power supply. So, marquee cable to 1.35 by 3.5 millimeter to 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter plug converter to 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter Y splitter to LCD controller to 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 millimeter female to female coupler to power supply. Yes, I know that's a mouthful. Yes, it's kind of confusing, but it's easier than it sounds. I believe in you, you can do this. Okay, and now that we're nearly wrapped up, we just start up the Raspberry Pi and configure the buttons. Most default setups will bring you to the controller menu automatically when you boot up the Pi, but just in case it doesn't, take out one of those wired USB controllers you got and go into the menu to configure the controls. You can configure them however you want, but the general mapping preference is from left to right, top to bottom, YXL, BAR, start equals player select, 
and select equals coin with the hotkey equaling the coin and select buttons as well. And guys, that is pretty much it. You're done. You now have an awesome little arcade system that can play thousands of games. If you want, you can also use console controllers or a mini USB keyboard via the USB extended plug. You can do tons more customization options to your arcade one-up cabinet, and there are tons of online communities and videos on how to take this even further from adding in a coin door or a bar stool like I eventually did, to swapping in a PC to play more modern games, to putting in a bigger screen, to adding in cup holders for your beverages, light guns, wheels, tons of other really cool things, so I highly recommend doing searches on them. If you end up doing this project, please let me know what your experiences were with it, or let me know what other arcade cabinets you decided to mod if it wasn't the Marvel one. Also, I want to give a shout out to ETA Prime's YouTube channel. His video on Arcade 1-Ups really helped me a lot with this build. If I made any mistakes with this process in this video, please let me know. Also, if you need any help or have any questions on how to do this or run into any problems, please let me know in the comments as well. I'm more than happy to take some time and, and try to address as many as I can. Uh, thanks for watching everybody. Really appreciate you guys supporting this channel. Peace out and game on.